I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Well, today I woke up this morning thinking about what are the obstacles? What are the obstacles that we human beings have in our life that prevents us from reaching our goals, especially our health goals? But when I looked at these obstacles, you know, reflecting on all the cases that we have year on year from across the world, these obstacles are just not the obstacles that come in between your health goals, but your life goals, your personal goals, your career goals, your relationship goals, everything else. And I've come up with six or seven of them today, which I want to share. There could be many, many more, but these are the ones that came immediately without you having to think because you see them all the time. So you don't have to really think about them. So we're gonna go through that list and it's a good thing for us to know because all of us at some point, including myself, we build these obstacles in our life. If we're aware of it and we do something about it, it's great for us. The problem is if we don't do anything about it. We have hundreds and thousands of people that come to us from around the world with different diseases, conditions, emotional problems, whatever it is. And the first thing, you can have the best medicine, you can have the best nutrition, the best gym membership, all of that stuff. But the first obstacle is if you have the wrong attitude, that's the biggest problem, your attitude. Most people fail because of their attitude. You can either have a positive attitude or a negative attitude. Now the problem with a negative attitude is it is a guarantee for a difficult life. It is a guarantee for an unfulfilled life if your attitude is poor. Every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life and relationship will be hampered if you have the wrong attitude. So most people, they're sick, but they have the wrong attitude. That gets in between their healing. Or they have a weight problem, but with their weight problem, they also got the wrong attitude. Now that makes it difficult to lose weight. You don't need a better diet, you don't need a better exercise program. All you need is the right attitude. You see, attitudes that are negative, no one's born with them. No child is ever born. No, no one in this world is born with a bad attitude. We pick up, we learn to have a bad attitude as we grow up. So if you grew up seeing your parents pessimistic all the time, if you grew up seeing your parents complaining and blaming the whole world with a negative attitude, eventually you believe that's the way to be and you adopt that attitude. Now that's not your fault, but it's our responsibility to identify that and change it when we find it's limiting when it's coming in the way of our professional growth, our health goals, career growth, when it's affecting our relationships, we need to change our attitude. A negative attitude gets us nothing. In fact, a negative attitude can also come when you come from a space of fear, negativity, you know, a low self-esteem. So people who have low confidence or low self-esteem, they use a poor attitude to make them feel better. They use a poor attitude like aggression or putting down people or rudeness because they need to distract themselves from their own you know, shortcomings. So we need to understand that it never ever helps you. Like I said, you can have the best medicine and the best exercise, but if you have the wrong attitude, nothing can help you. And that's one of the biggest obstacles we've seen. It happens with teenagers as well and young adults. You know, they're good in their studies. They have a fantastic IQ, everything, but they have the wrong attitude. And that, that, that explains, you have, like I always give an example, take the 10 top universities from across the world, okay? You'll have an X amount of people that pass out every year. They've had access to the same teachers, the same knowledge, the same education, but completely different outcomes. Maybe five or six of them will really make it in life. What about the rest? The difference is the attitude. The difference is what you do with what you have. So number one is the attitude. That's a huge obstacle. Be aware of your attitude. You have a bad atti attitude in some aspect of your life. You're not a bad person. You're a bad person if you continue to have that, but identify it and make the changes. A lot of our attitudes also come from the kind of friends that we roam with. So if all of your friends have a poor attitude towards life or a poor attitude towards health, or a poor attitude towards exercise, or a poor attitude towards material things and spirituality, guess what? You become who you spend most of your time with. Your attitude will automatically become that. So it is so important for us to know that we have learned our attitudes. You were not born with it, which means we can also unlearn our attitudes, extremely important. Number two is decisions. Most humans don't know how to make decisions. When the human mind decides enough is enough, I am tired of waking up tired every day. I am tired of being acidic. I am tired of this fat that I have in my 
midsection or whatever it is it's making me feel tired i am tired of my weight of my hair fall i am tired of being sick and falling sick all the time when the human mind decides makes a decision then you move into action but when we don't decide we move up and down the wind can blow us in any direction so we pop some antibiotics feel better get back to our own crappy lifestyle we don't make changes when you decide enough is enough i will not tolerate this behavior in a toxic relationship enough is enough i will not be put down in my workplace anymore i will not tolerate biasness i will not tolerate injustice when you decide you move to action but when you don't decide you accept everything the good and the bad and that impacts you that makes you a more bitter person resentful complaining blaming all of that stuff the human mind has to decide in order for action to follow so most people don't decide that they want to get healthy they don't decide that you know i want to evolve in my relationships they're just moving with the flow and that's why we don't achieve that's a huge obstacle the third is your priority if you are trying to fix your health but it's not a priority for you that's your biggest obstacle you can waste a lot of money on medication nutrition emotional healing spirituality and all of that stuff but if it is not your priority you will not give it the importance it needs so i always ask businessmen or whoever it is who's flourishing in their particular career what is it that helps you be successful at what you do and you will find out they have priorities i have priorities in my business i have priorities in my whatever it is that you're successful at the same thing has to be done with your health if your health is not a priority to you you will neglect it you will miss your workouts you will have days where you just don't eat well because it's not your priority but what if i told you hey take 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 it easy relax on your priorities and your business would you do that absolutely not because it's important to you it's so important for you so if you've not prioritized what is important in your life whether it's spending time with your families nurturing your relationships doing your exercise sleeping on time then you will never meet your goals and you will continue to yo-yo and then you keep changing diets and exercise programs like i said this is not an issue of diets or exercise programs this is an issue of you prioritizing it so when you've prioritized it you wake up motivated to do it it's as simple as that it becomes a habit and a lifestyle the fourth point is if you have a problem okay you got to come with your cup half empty a lot of people think they know everything and that becomes a big obstacle if you knew everything then why are you sick in the first place why is your business failing why are your relationships failing why aren't you evolving personally if you know everything we like to think that we know everything but it's okay if we don't it's absolutely okay if we don't a lot of people like to show they know everything but knowledge without action is useless you want to look at people who know a little bit and they practice it they get a result then they study a little bit more they gain more knowledge through content they practice it they become an expert and they evolve so keep your cup half empty learn you can always learn i don't care if you're a billionaire a ceo of a company but there is opportunity for everyone to learn at every step you may be an expert at business but you're not an expert at health keep your cup half empty and learn the same way you would tell someone else who you're mentoring you may be an expert at dance but you're not an expert at business so please learn what i'm teaching you keep your cup half empty people think they know everything if you knew everything you shouldn't be the person with the problem so keep your cup half empty the fifth point the fourth point your goals if you don't know your goals if you don't have clarity about what you want in life you keep moving this way sometimes it's good for you to sit and reflect what do you truly want what is your goal when it comes to health is it really just losing 2 3 kilos or is it more important than that where you want to build your health holistically i want to evolve emotionally physically spiritually intellectually know your goal people who don't know what they want and they don't know what their goals they keep moving they keep moving from one post to another they keep changing and no one can help them because they don't know what they want they don't know what their goal is when you have a goal then you have a path of action if you don't have a goal the roads can all be different you don't know which road to take so today you take one road tomorrow you get fed up and take another road and then you don't get your results and then you start complaining and blaming and whining and complaining and blaming and whining so know your goal and break that goal down into little milestones fine i want to lose 20 kilos it took me 3 years to put on 20 kilos i'm not going to lose it in 2 months 
Okay, be realistic. Break it down into small milestones, but be clear. Without clarity of mind, there is no clarity in your results as well. Life keeps throwing you in all directions until you know what you want. Then the sixth point is discipline and consistency. This is the biggest obstacle. Most people know what to do. Most people already know what they should eat. They already know the exercises that suit their body. They already know the importance of sleep. They already know the importance of not taking too much of stress or learning to manage their stress. The issue is self-discipline and consistency. Okay, everyone starts off on the 1st of January. That's the best example. By the 15th of January, people are not using their gym memberships. They've fallen off their New Year resolutions when it comes to food. Most people do because the problem is self-discipline and consistency. How can you take one small thing and practice that with consistency. Discipline doesn't mean punishing yourself. Discipline doesn't mean not failing. You can start off with one thing. Let's say for example today, everyone's gonna try to sleep, to uh, finish their dinner by seven o'clock, okay? You may fail tomorrow, it's okay. Try again the next day and try again. That's self-discipline. Self-discipline doesn't mean you gotta try and get it right. You may fail, but you will continue doing it with consistency until it becomes a lifestyle or a habit. And most people fail over there. They don't wanna, they don't have the patience and the perseverance to do something over and over again. And that is where self-discipline comes in and consistency. And this aspect is not for your health. It is every aspect in your life. When we coach people and people have fail and they say, why me, why me, why me? And if you ask them, do you really wanna know the truth? And you sit them down and you show them, you don't do what you're supposed to do to reach your goals. That's the truth. No one likes that, but you can't change the truth. It's as simple as that. And the last point, be grateful. A lot of people are ungrateful. You may not have something right now, but what you have, if you can't be grateful for what you have, you are never gonna achieve what you don't have right now. So maybe it's a health goal, if it's a personal goal relationship, you're focusing only on what you don't have. It's about time that you start focusing on what you have, even though it's very, very little. Because you see, ungratefulness connects to a poor attitude. And by now you would have figured out that a poor attitude connects to every single thing that I'm telling you. Every single thing that I'm telling you. You know, there are a lot of people who heal there are cases which are recorded in medical journals. They've healed only because of a great attitude. Of course, medicine puts it as, oh, we have no reasons as to why and there's no evidence and stuff, but the person healed only by changing their attitude. So you need to understand your attitude is everything. When you have a poor attitude, it impacts trillions of cells in the human body. It impacts your thoughts. If it impacts your thoughts, it impacts your feelings. If it impacts your feelings, it impacts your behavior. If it impacts your behavior, it impacts your results and your experience of life. And then you make the decisions from a poor attitude. Oh, I don't feel good. Let's have an ice cream to feel better. Oh, I don't feel good. Let's smoke some more cigarettes to feel better. Oh, I don't feel good. Let's spend some money on a Rolex watch or a handbag so people will appreciate me more. You see, there's nothing wrong with all of these things, but if you're doing it with the wrong intention because of your attitude, you have a big problem and only you can solve that problem because the attitude has come from you. You have to unlearn it. These are the top the top obstacles, whether it's a child in school, a teenager studying in university, a young adult, a senior citizen, whoever, these are the main obstacles that are coming in your way. So if you feel that you are failing right now and you're unable to achieve something, it's your attitude. Yes, we know fourth stage cancer is different, but is everyone dying from fourth stage can cancer? The answer is no, but your attitude is so fixed on what statistics is showing you that you're, you become pessimistic, you're giving up. There's no way you're gonna survive if you've given up. We all know that, we all know that. Medicine knows that, science knows that, and we know that. If you give up, you will not achieve it. But what is the truth? Your attitude, you decide to kick that cancer, you decide to do everything. It may work, may not work, because there's something called destiny. But your failures cannot be defined by other people, by society, and by what you read in books and other people's lives. Everyone is different. So when you decide to break down your life right now and your failures using these six obstacles, I can guarantee you, you will find one or all of them in your life. And if you can change these things, you'll find that you don't need a diet, you don't need an exercise program, you're already doing that well. Because the problem is not your diet, the problem is not your exercise program. The problem are these obstacles. Attitude, inability to make a decision or making the wrong decisions from a space of fear and negativity. Priority, you got your priorities all wrong then coming with your cup half full. Be open to learning. 
Be open to taking advice from other people and learning. Don't think you're always right. Put your pride and your ego down. Your pride and ego is also connected with your attitude. Most people have poor and sick attitudes because of their ego and pride. So you gotta keep that. Have a clear goal, clarity in your mind. Break them down into milestones. Discipline and consistency and practice gratitude. Have a great day everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.